NA1 SS, VO1 BZM. Go ahead. Over. Uh, I think we had something cut in on your side. Here's the next question. This is Jordan. What is the most difficult part about being in a low gravity environment? Over. Jordan, the most difficult part about being in a low gravity environment is. You know, in fact, it, it makes most things easier. It's actually quite hard to do up your shoes because you float around. We put on shoes to use the exercise equipment. And if you're always floating and bouncing off the ceiling, you, it's hard to do up your shoes when you're floating around the room. It's a surprising thing, but, but it's difficult. Over. This is Caitlin. How will the International Space Station deorbit and return to Earth? Over. Caitlin, at the end of its life, we will fire the thrusters, the engines on the International Space Station, to drive it into the atmosphere like a meteorite, and it will, parts of it will survive and make it all the way to the surface. So we'll crash it into a big empty ocean, the South Pacific. That's what we normally do with old spaceships, and that's what we'll do with the space station maybe 15 years from now or so. Over. This is Alex. What type of aircraft is your favorite to fly? Over. Uh, Alex, my favorite aircraft to fly, and I've flown a lot, is the F-86 Sabre, the Canada Air Sabre, a beautiful old airplane. There's only one flying in Canada. It flies out of Gatineau, Quebec, in a museum there. It's a beautiful extension of humanity on my hands and feet. It's like you have wings on your back. The F-86 Sabre is my favorite. Over. This is Dylan. How does your time as the commander on NEMO 14 compare to being the commander on the ISS? Uh, the two are very similar, Dylan. Uh, just the big difference is length of time. We're on station for half a year. We were underwater for just a few weeks. But the isolation, the danger, the close quarters, the heavy schedule, they were very similar. It was a good simulator, a good trainer for being the commander of a spaceship. Over. This is Evan. In what ways is the ISS a suitably conscious environment? Uh, the ISS, I think, makes us most aware of the environment. Um, if that's what you meant by your question, we see the whole world every 90 minutes. And so we're very aware of, of the health of the Earth and what impact we're having on the Earth. And we think about it and we talk about it. And, um, and so I think if everyone could see the world this way, they'd be more suitably conscious of the environment. Over. This is Chantal. How does the ISS aid in the development of space exploration? Over. Chantal, the, uh, the space station is the test vehicle to design spaceships. If we're going to get in a spaceship and go to Mars or further, if you're going to do that, Chantal, you want to know that your equipment is going to work. What to make the metal out of? What to make the pumps out of? How do you build the wires? How do you build the the food system? The the, the toilet system? Hello, this is Mau Mau. How long does it take to travel from Earth to the ISS? Over. SS, this is VO1 DZN. This is uh, the space station. Go ahead, over. Okay, we have a little something going on here. We'll, uh, we'll bring our next question on now. Hopefully, we get one more in. Thank you. Hello, this is Mau Mau. How long does it take to travel from Earth to the ISS? Over. Mau Mau, you could do it in a couple hours, but then you'd be really rushed. In May, when they do it, they'll do it in four orbits or six hours from launch to docking. Six hours. We took two days because that's the old traditional way, but we're trying to speed it up so that the new answer is six hours. Over. This is Alex. How does sleeping on the ISS differ from sleeping on Earth? The big difference is you don't lie down. You float. So your sleeping you bag floats yours. and you float. No mattress. Money. No pillow. It's more like uh, sleeping while you're floating in a beautifully warm swimming pool. Over. <laughs> Hi, this is Taffer. What kinds of tasks are completed during spacewalks? Over. We save the tasks outside that you can only do with your hands. Delicate <coughs> tasks. Tasks that require human judgment. If it's simple, we let the robot arm do it. 
If it's hard, then we have to go outside and do it ourselves. Over. Colonel Hatfield, thanks very much for this. We're at the end of our pass here. Thanks a lot. Uh, successful flying, and we much appreciate it. It was a real pleasure for me, and congratulations to all of you on being here. Thanks for getting here today, despite the snowstorm. And for Arjua and Astra. Over. Well, Colonel Hatfield, this is Everett Price, uh, VO1 Delta Kilo. I had the pleasure of coordinating this. Pleasure of saying hello to you and uh, success with your trip. Last word. <laughs>